For years and years, the Honda Civic Si was considered one of the best sporty, affordable cars you can get. But some of that shine has been taken off because now Honda has finally decided to grace the US with the awesome Type R model. I've been sent a 2020 Civic Si sedan to review for a week, and I'm gonna find out whether or not the Type R really has taken the shine off of this Si model, or if it's as good as I remember. Let's go see what the 2020 Civic Si is all about. So let's check out the exterior of the Civic Si where they've made some changes for 2020. We've got new LED headlights that come as standard, which are really cool. We've got our little SI badge, which if you didn't know, stands for sport injection. We've got some nice black uh, accents back here. The whole thing looks incredibly aggressive and sporty, especially when painted in a red color like this. The Civic was always a very boring looking car in America and Europe got like a really cool outrageous version. Finally, the Civic matches in America what you get in Europe. You also get these new 18 inch uh, black wheels, these are standard on the SI. There are some other wheel options, but I don't know why you'd wanna opt for them because I think this base wheel just looks so fantastic as is. Coming around the back, we do have a much more sporty appearance than on a normal Civic. We've got the large spoiler and the, of course the SI badge indicating that this is, this is an SI. We have red accents here that are kind of drowned out because of course the whole car is red, but they do stay red if you get this car in another color. And one of my favorite things back here is the center mounted exhaust, which I think looks really cool. Now the coupe looks a little bit different. It's got like a kind of connected tail light over the top, but I still think the sedan version looks absolutely outrageous, though not as outrageous as the Type R. Now let's go ahead and check out the interior. So just like the exterior of the Civic, which is wild, the interior in here is quite sporty as well. We've got a lot of red accents. We've got kind of like a faux carbon fiber thing going on. We've got, you can only get cloth seats in a Civic Si. You can't get leather, but they are these really nice bolstered cloth seats that say Si on the back. They have this cool red pattern as well. Um, I haven't been in one of these in a very long time, but Honda says they have re-engineered the seat cushioning just a little bit, giving you, uh, giving you a little bit more comfort and a little bit more bolstering. I think these seats are absolutely fantastic and they just look the business. They're super cool. And they've also added this red accenting here on the dash. This wasn't here before. I think it looks really cool. Goes very well when you have a red exterior like we do. With a different color exterior like blue, it might be a little bit weird, uh, but I think it looks pretty cool as a res anyway. We've got this very nice leather wrapped steering wheel. Feels very nice in hand with some sporty red stitching. Of course, we We've got our manual, manual transmission here, six speed with this very tiny, uh, dainty looking shifter. They've kind of done this exact shifter ball pattern for a while now. I love the way it feels in hand and it also has some sporty red stitching as well. We've got our brake hold feature here. That's gonna work so well with this manual transmission here to hold you into place so you don't have to roll back on hills. We do have an electronic parking brake here, which I think is a little bit annoying, but I understand why Honda has does that does that now. We've got our gauge cluster. It's pretty much all digital now up here in the main cluster. The one complaint that I have about it is it's a little bit dim. So if I'm wearing sunglasses, it makes it a little bit difficult to see, uh, but I can push this button here for information and I can cycle through. I can have like a stopwatch. I can have a G meter. I can have a boost gauge on it. I can have this little shift light here. So you see it goes from green uh, to yellow. I believe if I rev it up, there we go, we should see. It won't let me rev while I'm stationary, but you see the shift light will get to a point of red when you're about to hit uh, max RPMs, which is pretty cool. I like that function as well. And then to either side of the RPM and speedometer gauge, we have these very cool uh, fuel and temperature gauges that kind of just look like a little uh, tack that's like moving up. Very interesting. I've never really seen anything like that. As I mentioned on the exterior, the Civic was always kind of boring in the United States and Europe got this freaky deaky spaceship looking Civic. Finally, the US has caught up and our Civic is just as outrageous as the European one. So I'm very happy that Honda has finally uh, given us a cool looking Civic. Uh, the infotainment system, this is the one area where the Civic isn't quite as good as some of its competitors from uh, Kia and Toyota. I think their infotainment systems are just a little bit better. This system, it's fine, it's clear, it's pretty responsive. I, I feel like some of the menus there, I just pushed info, there. You 
You see how that took like a while? I'm gonna push home and there it goes. Everything is just on a delay here. It doesn't happen really quick. I'm gonna push settings and now I'm on settings. Everything's a little bit slow here. So in terms of infotainment, Honda could do a little bit better here. Um, it does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay though, so I'm not gonna harp on them too much. And again, all of this stuff is standard here on the SI, which is great. We've got our heated seats. We've got a very nice uh, dash layout here. We've got a nice cubby hole here with like a little pass through. The USB port is all the way down here, but Honda has given me this little uh, wire pass through. So it's real easy for me to plug in my phone for Android Auto right here. And I can sit my phone there. I've got some additional storage here on the console on either side. And then I've got this vast center console storage area, which is great. I've got sort of like this sliding doohickey for my cup holders. I can slide uh, the armrest up. I can push it all the way back. And then I have a really deep amount of storage here. That's great so that when I'm shifting gears really quickly, I'm not bumping into my drinks here on the center console. I've got a sunroof as standard. Uh, we've got automatic climate control, dual zone. So I'm just so happy with the amount of equipment that Honda gives you here as standard. Uh, it's amazing that all of this costs about $25,000. And the practicality doesn't just stop up here, it continues into the backseat. Because I've got the sedan version of the Civic Si, it is available as a coupe as well. We've got 37.4 inches of legroom. I have the seat pushed up a little bit, but it feels massive back here. This is almost as much legroom as you get in a Camry. So you really almost get the feeling like you're in a midsize car here. And now the coupe does not offer as much legroom, but it does offer more legroom than a Mercedes S-Class coupe. Just let that sink in. That's how practical the Honda Civic is as a car. And that continues into the trunk. And just like the back seat, the trunk is really practical as well. We've got 15.1 cubic feet of storage back here because this is a front wheel drive vehicle. Honda was able to push out the trunk linings real wide. This is almost as big as a Camry's trunk, which is a mid-size vehicle, whereas the Civic is just a compact. You can get even more room by pulling these two tabs. That'll let you lower the seats, fold them down into the back seat. Now you can't get an SI as a hatch. You can only get it as a coupe or a slightly less practical sedan, but again, Again, I think this sedan is practical enough for most people. All right, now for the part of the review we've all been waiting for, the drive, and me included. I've been waiting to do this part, so let's put it in sport mode. We've got our lights glowing up red here. Let's turn off traction control for good measure and see what the Civic Si is like to drive. Now we've got a 1.5 liter turbo VTEC engine, 205 horsepower and 192 pound-feet of torque, and a six-speed manual transmission is your only transmission choice. You see the big smile on my face? If you want an automatic car, you're gonna have to go elsewhere. Now let's go ahead and see what front wheel drive traction can do to put the power down. All right, slip. There we go, second gear. A little bit of jerkiness when you try to shift into second. Oh, gosh, I love this transmission so much. Now you might have heard something as I was launching. You might have heard a beep and you might have wondered what that was. No, it was not letting me know that traction control uh, was coming up. That is actually a shift timer. It's a new addition to the SI for 2020. Honda has added it. It was a, actually a requested feature by owners. Uh, you can program a little shift light to come up here on the gauge cluster here, and that'll alert you visually on when to shift. But those who have ever been on a racetrack on a track day know that you're really not paying that much attention to your gauges. You're kind of just knowing when to shift. And that little beep gives you an audible notice that it's time to pull into the next gear. I think it's pretty cool actually. Like it definitely lets you know exactly when to go into the next gear without having to pay too much attention, letting you keep your eyes ahead on the racetrack. Now this engine itself pulls very strong, 205 horsepower. When you're in the right gear, oh, it's very strong. The transmission itself, snickety. I love changing gears in this car. I love going up the gearbox just so I can brake and go down it again. Rev matching in this car is a joy. You can rev match this car so perfectly. Upshift, oh, it's just such a 
fun, enjoyable car. I love the fact that Honda still only offers this with a six-speed manual. For 2020, they've actually shortened the drive ratios just a little bit uh, on the transmission. That's gonna give you a little bit better response, a little bit better acceleration as well. Now, the zero to 60 time on this car, it's a front-wheel drive car, so it's not gonna be that impressive. Honda says you'll get to 60 miles an hour in about 6.8 seconds in this car, which is a little slower than its key competitors. You've got the Jetta GLI, you've got the Kia Forte GT, which is a little cheaper than this car, and you've got the upcoming Hyundai Elantra N-Line. But those of you who know, uh, we'll probably know that probably the reason why those cars are a little quicker is that they are available with dual clutch transmissions. That's just the fact of the matter, folks. Uh, because this car only comes with a manual, it's just never gonna beat those cars off the line with their snappy, quick shifting dual clutch transmissions. You can get those cars as a manual as well. Um, I've driven the GLI with a manual and it's very good, but this manual is just a little bit better. I love playing with this one just a little bit more. Now there is one big problem that you've probably heard of on this generation, the 10th generation of the Civic Si, and that is the fact that this is the first turbocharged Civic Si, and that is good in a number of ways. The torque, 192 pound-feet, is way more than you used to get from the normally aspirated Civics, but it doesn't sound as good. Those old engines were screamers, and they revved to like 8,000 RPM, which was just so fun. You could really rev the pants off them. This one is a little more happy at about four or 5,000 RPM. It only revs to about 6,500. And the other problem that you may have heard about with this car is something called rev hang. So I'm in third gear, about to shift, and the revs, don't drop like they do on a normal manual transmission car. And, you know, other journalists told me about this and I kind of thought they were crazy for a second. That is until I hopped into my personal car, which is a Ford Fiesta ST. And the moment I pushed in the clutch and went to change gear, I'm like, oh, that's what it means. So on my Fiesta, the RPMs drop and I was able to match it a little bit. So when you first get into the SI, it's gonna be a little bit weird to get used to this rev hang thing, but I, I will say it doesn't bother me that much. I still think this car is a whole bunch of fun. You get used to it. When this is the only car you're driving on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't think it's going to bother you at all. So I really don't find it to be a huge issue. We've also got the active sound, which is new for 2020. You might be able to hear they pump in a little bit of engine noise from the speakers to make it a little bit louder than last year's model. Um, some people don't like fake engine noise, but again, I think it sounds pretty good in here. You also get a slew of Honda uh, sensing active safety features as standard. There are no options on this car apart from summer tires, which we have. So as standard, this car has adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist. Uh, it has this brake hold feature, which is absolutely fantastic. You push it you know and it'll hold you at a red light which is great on a manual transmission car because it means you won't roll back when you're going to head and push in the clutch so this is a great car for somebody who's maybe buying their first car or a young buyer because you get all this safety stuff as standard you get Honda's little lane watch camera I can push this button to trigger it and I can see my camera view over to the right because the one thing it doesn't have is blind spot monitoring but I do think this camera is a very nice substitute and this car is amazing on gas too. It gets 26 mpg in the city, 36 mpg on the highway, and combined you'll be doing about 30. And based on my trip computer, I've averaged about 30 mpg. In a car that's this fun, come on, this thing's amazing. I love everything about it. You can push sport mode. It's gonna engage the adaptive dampers. The steering is great. The balance of this car is so great. I showed you how big the Civic has gotten when we checked out the back seat and everything like that, but from behind the wheel, I'm like, where did all of that size go? It shrinks around the car and when you rev it. It just loves to rev. It loves to heel toe downshift. It loves to whip around little corners, even though it is quite a large car. Oh yeah, you can whip it and power out. No problem. This is one of the best cars you can get for about 25 grand. I absolutely adore driving it. And if you're looking for an affordable car that's also fun to drive, but functions as a daily driver, 
you should be looking at a Civic Si. This thing is great. So that was the 2020 Honda Civic Si sedan. Now the big question I wanna answer is whether or not the shine has been taken off this car now that the Civic Type R is finally available in the US. And I'm going to say unequivocally, absolutely not. This car costs $25,000 and the only option you really need to add onto it is the summer rubber for $200. And I would question whether or not to do that because it does add a little bit of road noise that I noticed while we were out there driving. So $25,000 with destination, you can get this car for about $26,000. A Type R is gonna cost you about 10 grand more. Now there are a few key competitors that you should probably look at. You've got the Kia Forte, which is a little bit smaller. I think it has a little bit more premium features inside and you can get it with a dual clutch. Then you've got the Jetta GLI, which again has a little bit more premium features, but it is more expensive. Then there's the Subaru WRX, which I think people will get mad at me if I don't bring up, but that's all wheel drive. And again, much more expensive than the SI. This car is an absolute bargain. And if you're looking for a car that's practical, fun, affordable, and cool looking, I think this absolutely needs to be on your shopping list as a top choice. We hope you've enjoyed this video on the 2020 Civic Azai sedan. For more information on the Civic, be sure to check out a link in the description below. But for more information over on carbuzz.com. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. I'll see you next time.